Hello, and welcome to Math Matters. I'm Mrs. Halpin, and today we are going to continue learning about measures of center. For this lesson, you will need paper and a pencil or something else to write with it. A calculator would also be helpful. We will pause for a moment while you gather through those materials. Now that you're ready, let's get started. There are a couple of learning goals for today's lesson. We'll have one math goal and one portion of a graduate goal. Let's take a look at today's math goal first. I am learning to use measures of center to describe real world situations. And I am learning which measure of center may be most appropriate for a given set of data. By the end of today's lesson, I hope that you'll feel more comfortable finding and calculating measures of center. I also hope that you'll be able to identify which measures of center are most useful for describing a given set of data. Our portrait of a graduate goal is focused on being a creative and critical thinker. I can revise and refine my ideas. Creative and critical thinkers are always revising their ideas based on new learning and information. They're rough draft thinkers. They know that their understanding of topics will likely evolve over time as they understand concepts more deeply. Let's jump into today's lesson. Take a look at this image. What do you notice? What do you wonder? You might be noticing that this is a weather forecast or prediction for the next eight days. You may have noticed that some days are sunny, but most days are cloudy. You might have noticed that most of the days are weather you might expect in the spring and summer. If you had to plan what to wear, especially during the day, you might wear shorts and a t-shirt. You might have noticed the temperature is the same on Tuesday and Friday. You might be wondering, what city is this forecast for? You might also be wondering, what's the normal temperature during this time of year for this particular place? Today, we are going to use this data set to explore measures of center. Mode, mean, and median are measures of center that are useful for describing the average for different situations. They represent numbers that describe the data set. Let's dive into each one a little bit further. This weather report is for Des Moines, Iowa. Remember when we discussed that the temperature was the same on Tuesday and Friday? We call this the mode. The mode is the value that appears most often. Our data set is the anticipated temperature for each day. Weather forecasters expect that it will be 79 degrees on Tuesday and on Friday. 79 is the mode for this set of data. Kayla is going to visit her grandmother in Des Moines. She's thinking about what she might want to wear. She notices the temperatures are close together, but some days are hotter or cooler than others. Kayla would like to find the average temperature it will be in Des Moines over the next week or so. Finding the average temperature will help her to pack and prepare for the weather. So first we're going to find the mean. The mean is the arithmetic average of all the data points. To do this, I can take the sum of all eight values. When I add each data point, the sum is 628. Then I can divide the total by the number of values 
or data points in the set. The forecast gives me eight temperatures or data points, so I will divide the total by eight. The mean for this set of data is 78 and 5 tenths degrees. So when you're doing this, you can use paper pencil to find the sum and divide. You can also use a calculator. Lastly, we are going to find the median for this set of data. The median is the middle value in a data set that is ordered from least to greatest. To find the median, I will order the temperatures from least to greatest. Then I will cross off each data point starting at the ends until I find the middle. So I can start at the ends by crossing out 70 and 87, and now I'm working my way in to cross out 71 and 85. I can work to the next point, 76 and 81, and now I see that I have two numbers in the middle. I notice these numbers are the same, so the median is 79. If the numbers were different, I would find the sum of the two middle data points and then divide by two. But I don't need to do that because the middle data points are the same. Now we have found the mode, mean, and median for this set of data. Wow, these measures of center are either the same or very similar. This will not always be the case. These data points are relatively close together, meaning the temperature is fairly similar. You probably would pack light summer clothes for the entire trip. These measures of center are practically the same. Now let's explore another example where we need to determine which measure of center is the best descriptor for the given set of data. What do you notice? What do you wonder? You might have noticed that these yellow bars are in order from least to greatest, starting at the top and working downward. You might have noticed the last bar is the only one that has half of the entire row, over half of the entire row shaded in. You might be wondering, what do those yellow bars represent? What new information did we just learn? Does any of it surprise you? What do you think this graph might be about? What new information did we just learn? This bar graph is about how long animals can hold their breath underwater. These seven bars represent the seven species listed in the gray box. Which species goes with which bar? And why do you think that? Did you make some predictions? Let's see if your predictions were correct. What new information did we just learn? Does any of it surprise you? Why or why not? Take a moment to jot down your thinking.
I was really surprised that the alligator can hold its breath for two hours or 120 minutes. Wow. You might have noticed that the average human can hold his or her breath for one minute, while the world record human can hold his or her breath for 22 minutes. World record means that this is the most amount of time ever recorded for a human being holding his or her breath underwater. No one has beat that time. The rest of these data points represent animals that live in different bodies of water. Now we are going to find the measures of center for this really interesting data. To find the mean for this data set, we can calculate the sum of all the values and then divide the sum by the total number of data points. I'll give you a moment to try this first. You can use paper, pencil, or a calculator to find the mean. The sum of these data points is 196. Then we can divide that sum by the total number of data points. 196 divided by seven equals 28. So the mean for this set of data is 28 minutes. To find the median, we can order the data points from least to greatest. I want to find the value in the middle. I can see that 10 is the middle because it has three data points on each side. So the median for this set of data is 10 minutes. What do you notice about the mean and the median? You might be thinking, wow, the measures of center are really different this time. I wonder why. This data contains an outlier. An outlier is a value that lies outside of the data. It is much larger or smaller than most of the other values in a set of data. Can you find an outlier in our data? The alligator is much larger in comparison to the rest of the data points. The median is a good choice when the data has a, a value or a couple of values much higher or lower than those in the rest of the data set. The median is the best descriptor of this average when you have an outlier. The mean is a good choice when the data set looks fairly similar. This is the best descriptor when you do not have an outlier or outliers in the data. For this set of data, the median is the most use useful measure of center that helps us understand the average time an animal can hold its breath underwater. You might have noticed that we didn't find a mode for this set of data. Why do you think that is? In this set of data, None of the values have occurred more than one time, so we cannot identify a mode. What do you notice about this set of data? You might have noticed that it will be 92 degrees four times. The mode is 92 degrees. And this number occurs often. The data has four identical values, which makes mode the best measure of center for this data set. What do you notice about this data set?
You might have noticed that the temperatures are much cooler than previous reports we've examined. You might have noticed that on Friday, it will be very cold. 25 degrees means you are putting on a hat and a coat, whereas it will be much warmer on Wednesday. Wednesday, you might wear jeans and a t-shirt if it's 64 degrees out. 25 degrees is an outlier because it is significantly cooler than the rest of the days. I would most likely want to find the median for this set of data due to the outlier. In today's episode of Math Matters, we found the measures of center for real world data. We considered which measure of center would give us the best picture of data. Tomorrow, we will explore what happens when you add or remove a data point. Let's take a moment to reflect. How do you feel about your ability to find mean, median, and low for the data set? Reflect on how you did working towards these goals today and give a thumbs up, a thumbs up if you got it, a thumb in the middle if you're still practicing, or a thumb down if you feel like you need help from a teacher or someone at home. I encourage you to share any questions you might have had today with your teachers. I'm Mrs. Halpin. I hope you have a great day and keep on counting.